One of the big aspects in Australia is at the moment the sensors and the radar applications. Um, regardless if you are designing radars or if you think about integrating them into your platform, um, there are two different ones. We have long ra uh, range radar sensors that are up to 120 meters trying to keep um, or helping to keep uh, the safety distances. We have also near range radar sensors um, that operate at 24 gigahertz, um, for example, changing lanes um, for aiding with parking um, and also stop and go functionality and so on. Um, we use a pulsed Doppler radar in many cases because um, that uh, pulse gives us a, conc a concrete starting point, for example, uh, to determine the range. And uh, the pulled width gives us also um, the ability to look at range resolution. If you look at the different steps, so we start usually, and we can go the entire path. We start with um, the design of the um, component. We are able then to put the component into the uh, platform and then run a full real world analysis for your radar system integrated in um, the automotive um, application. And I can show a quick slide on the first step. So what people usually do or how is, how is it working is that we have two different um, or separate setups, one for the TX, one for the RX. They have different specs and different requirements. You can see that we have a high gain and the steerable beam on the TX side and then a low gain, uh, which is more sensitive across a bigger range of, of different angles on the receive side. And of course, it's, it's important to also uh, yeah, look at the system that is feeding that structure and the radome, and we can do all those things together in one simulation. So that gives you an ability to really optimize quickly those designs and then come up with a really strong application and a good product. On this slide, we can see now the integration of um, a radar uh, setup into the platform. And um, you can see that it differs from the free space solution. So the main beam is not quite, um, um, differs a little bit. And we have also a little bit of noise and dirt on the side uh, uh, beam. But this is, this is the, the the important thing about uh, having a second view on implementing um, your device into the final platform to really look how is it acting and behaving in the real world. Now we are going one step further and taking that platform and putting it into a scenario. And um, you can create and build all those different scenarios, what you want. You can see here, it's a 77 gigahertz automotive radar at a busy intersection um, with a bandwidth of 30 megahertz and a resolution of um, 0 0.5 meters. Um, the Henning plot is very important and gives you a good feedback on how the radar operates in, in its environment. Um, we have to do a couple of steps to do that. Um, we um, generate um, the TX to RX signal first, but based on a couple of sample frequencies, and then synthesize the pulse from those um, different sample frequencies. Um, once this is done, we get a Fourier transformation and create a range profile out of that. And you can see that on the X axis in that picture, you will see a different range and then the magnitude out of it. And the way how we expand that entire thing into the velocity axis on the Y axis um, is that we do it for one scenario at time T. And now we do it for a second scenario for another time where we move the objects accordingly to their uh, intended velocity. To solve those larger scenarios, we have a technology for that, which is called shooting and bouncing ray methods. You can see um, different rays are bouncing uh, over the over the model. What basically is happening is we, we, we shoot a ray, that ray is hit, uh, hits a surface or a dielectrical surface, can be metallic, can be dielectric. And that creates a current and that current creates another ray and that's the and shoots of the second ray. So you see different generations 
differently color coded uh, of rays in your model. Um, the code is um, able to look at uh, a lot of details, like for example, the surface roughness of the road, but also a lamppost and so on. So you can bring in trees um, and also other um, objects into your scenarios. <clears throat> 